you doing? What were some of your activities in the, within the movement? Well, let, what shall I say? I started off as a kid, young fella. Got into Syracuse, New York, and a strike broke out. Spontaneous Little Falls, New York. And the Italian comrades there asked me to go down there and lead the strike. I led the strike down there for several weeks. Surrounded many times by gunmen at night in the halls. That time, pickets didn't have liberties like they had today. And I conducted that strike until Bill Haywood came down from Paris and took over. There I left Chicago. Just prior to that, I'd been involved in a strike of Rochester, New York, the clothing cutters. I lost my job. That's why I had to go to Utica. And Utica involved in the Little Falls strike, so I had to leave there. So I came to Chicago. And I tried to get a job in Chicago and couldn't get a job because the association had to be blacklisted. So I went down to St. Louis and tried to get a job, couldn't get that job. Well, then I got back to Chicago. I got active then in, in the Amalgamated Union and worked as a clothing cutter. And then during the 1915 strike, I was arrested 39 times. Because, you know, the policeman watches you, and if you hit him with your hands, then he arrests you. So he shouldn't be arrested, so I used to, with my knee. <laughs> the, the policeman said once to the judge, you know, I was arrested, and it came to the trial. So the uh, judge asked him, what did you do? He says, Your Honor, she hit me. So he gives a look, and I was standing in the pit. So he says, she hates you. She's so small. He says, Your Honor, she jumped up. <laughs> <laughs> it was true, I slept. <laughs> so naturally, you know, those things happen very often. Because when you go and take down a shop, you get in a fight. But you don't want the policeman to see you because he's arresting you. So you try to do it your way, the way you can. How many times are you arrested? Oh, plenty. But I used to go out from the, you know, the lawyer would bill, bill me out, and I would go back to the big lot. I never seen you know. I always would go back because I did things there that arrest you because you start a fight with them. But the way I fought them, they couldn't see it. So they arrest me because I was in the crowd. <laughs> Uh, but they didn't see me actually doing it. So you were an agitator. <laughs> well, we all tried to do our best. Wie lang, oh, wie lang wird ihr bleiben, noch schlafen und trocken? 
was teeming, teeming at that side at that time there were all kinds of uh, activities there were there were the literary cafes where writers Jewish writers used to get together there was the theatrical cafe that was the cafe royale on 12th street and second avenue you know where the theatrical people used to get together then there was the cafe where rank and file used to go to like uh, a cafe on on Second Avenue and uh, St. Mark's Place. There was a waiter by the name of Charlie. He was the the nerve center for all the the uh, communications communication nerve center for all the the messages and uh, whatever we needed. You see, we leave word with Charlie. And uh, spend hours, have a cup of coffee there and spend hours, you know, kibitzing and uh, discussing and trying to solve the problems of the world. If we take the trouble to look at what we call the lexicon of Yiddish literature, which is a, an eight or nine volume work, we'll notice that most, the most famous Yiddish writers will have a notation that they started their debuts were in on the pages of the Freie Arbeiterstern. And this was not just a, a coincidence, it was a pattern. It happened. Every budding writer, poet, dramatist, short storyteller knew that if he has any, if he shows any signs of talent, it will be recognized by the then editor Saul Janowski, who had an uncanny feeling to recognize who has in him something and who is just a, uh, a, a dilettante. And he would have in each issue of the Freie Arbeiterstimme a special column where he would answer and he would tell the guys, you better go back to shoemaking or you, better, you, you become a street, you, your talent shows that you're going to be a good street cleaner something like this. But on the other hand, if he discovers something, he printed it, and he encouraged the fellow. Geiser, geiser, stiller Drimmel, bist kein Heilung für mein Schmerz, bist kein End für euch das Rufen, euch das Suchen von mein Herz. In der Schönheit suche ich Sturm, in dem Sturm suche ich Ruhe, euch dem Busen von dem Sturm Mach ich meine Augen zu. <lacht> 